another season, another bout of not knowing anything about Brighton's team and their manager, but then thinking uh, the dogs package by the end of the season and wanting them at my club, Manchester United, uh, for any money and for any type of compensation to get them in. It, it's that type of season. And I feel like after last season, it would have been a learning experience for the club with Brighton competing in Europa League football, getting to, I believe it was the quarterfinals for the last 16 with a loss to Roma. Balancing that, they had injuries galore as well. They lost two of their key players in midfield and didn't successfully replace them. I feel like that was one of the poor recruitment windows for Brighton. But this summer, they have splashed the cash more than we've seen them do since they've been in the Premier League. You know, I feel like this is the result of how well they've, they've recruited in terms of the incomings over the last few years. And while we didn't see much change in terms of personnel against Everton, in the coming weeks and months, we will see those players come into the team and we will see a potential new look Brighton. But that game against Everton, a 3-0 win at Goodison Park, can still give us a lot to go on in terms of what we can expect from Brighton, what we can expect from Fabian Herzler, the new boss, 31 years old. He's he's just a year older than me, which is scary to think. I am analysing his team while he is winning Premier League football games as a manager. Fair play to him. You, you can't hate that achievement, and it, and it gives us a bit of encouragement to see someone so young doing something so amazing in the game. But we're going to go over Brighton. Was there improvements? What was good? What was bad about the performance? And where they go going forward, as I just said. We'll go over the attacking state, first of all. In the possession, we saw Brighton build up in a 2-3-2-3, very wide as well. A lot about Brighton under Herzler is going to be wit, and they stretched that entire pitch. And it was hard to really judge the build up against Everton, because Everton don't look to chase the ball. They don't look to hound teams from their original build-up stage with their pressing, and they would stand off them a little bit. And it felt like, for that first half especially, Brighton were trying to bait Everton into pressing them on the ball by bringing him into the centre-backs, maybe leaving Vi for a bit more free, that he could then receive the ball and play it to Pedro Milner, who could face a three-on-two situation with Welbeck potentially dropping in. But that didn't happen. Everton would stand off. They'd keep their two banks of four and limited Brighton to very little space to play through. But... Also, I thought in that first half an hour, Brighton were very rigid in the positions. There was a real lack of movement. It was players standing in their roles, especially with Milner and Pedro in their eight positions, with Pfeiffer in the in the holding midfield. There was a real lack of fluidity. The ball would come here to Hecker. He'd try and play it to Pfeiffer, but he'd have very stationary targets in Milner and Pedro, so it was easy for the Everton centre midfielders to cover around and prevent the ball from getting into him which would then force a pass backwards out to the fullback who could then try and build up. So it was, it was predictable. There was one and two touches to every passing loop, and it was a little bit slower. As the game wore on, we saw an increased amount of fluidity and a bit more positional play, and just, just a couple more attempts at opening the Everton shape up. Some of that is, as you'd see him switch from the three in midfield to Viper moving across to allow James Milner to drop in and give him a hand with Pedro moving up and Welbeck dropping in as the box midfield, which we saw under Roberto De Zerbi, which he, I think it's fair to say, popularised a little bit with his style, which would then potentially bring the centre-backs in to allow Matoma and Minter to attack the spaces in behind that diagonal runs off their fullback again, a la Roberto De Zerbi. So not a lot has actually changed, really. There is a lot of what they're trying to do in terms of retaining that style, which makes sense because Brighton recruit brilliantly in the, in the managerial appointments, not just the player recruitment. And the eights in particular, I think, are massive to this system, which is why it doesn't shock me when you see that they're linked with Toe Riley from Celtic, who's a more fluid, more mobile midfielder that's capable of receiving the ball in, in these zones and progress the play. Milner is obviously a fantastic servant and a great player for the Premier League, but I don't think he'll play too many more games in this midfield role. I think to play in the way that they play with the width and the amount of space you have to cover, it takes a lot of mobility, it takes a lot of stamina and legs to make this work with the quality to match it. And it wasn't just form in the box midfield again that you saw from Brighton. It was also little subtle movements from either Milner or Pedro or the fullbacks in Veltman and Hinchelwood. So you'd see a couple of things. One, Typically, because Hinchelwood is a holding midfielder, you'd see him come a little bit more narrow than Veltman would. Whether that's an instruction or whether that's just because that's a natural movement for Hinchelwood, again, sort of remains to be seen, but you'd see that. But one thing you would also see, specifically more on the right-hand side, is 
Veltman pushing up higher to allow Minter to come into this zone here, into that sort of half space 10 position. And as a result, you'd see maybe Milner coming out to the right back position to make sure that all the zones were covered as need be. It would drag markers out of position. So let's say if McNeil was tracking in Veltman, Gay or, or Mikolenko pushing into this area here gave more space for Milner in this area that could potentially drag Adrissa Gay over or Decore, or he could maybe fire a pass into Danny Welbeck who could drop a bit deeper. And so it's a little sign of things to come with those little movements, and I think those really will hurt a pressing team from their build-up. And as well, it would be the vertical movements of, of the eights in these positions as well to maybe go in behind with Welbeck dropping in a little bit deeper to try and distort Everton's shape. One thing this also did is with Welbeck staying in a little bit deeper, dragging the centre-backs back, maybe dragging the full-backs in a little bit more, is it created an opening horizontally for the likes of Minter, for the likes of Matoma to move inside with the ball, as Minter did a lot in that first half, taking the ball inside, which then forced the Everton shape along, where he could play the ball over here to Pedro and Matoma and get them attacking down their flank one-on-one -on -one and create openings there. So there's a lot of third man runnings, there's a lot of off the ball movements for selfless purposes from this Brighton team to create space for the wide players to use their, their direct running ability. And I feel like this Brighton team are a lot more equipped to attack in transition, whereas their only real direct threat previously was with Cairo Matoma, but with Minta coming into the team, with Adingra coming off the bench, they have a more direct threat, a more transitional-based threat to hit teams quicker and on the counter, which is going to be real important when they sort of box up and when they get Welbeck dropping into these areas to receive the ball. Maybe we see Jao Pedro in that position as well, who has a propensity to drop deep. Then you can see these runs from out to in from the wide players. And, and Minter and Matoma, I think, are, are going to have fantastic seasons because their ability to attack in slower build-up possession or in higher pace tempo football. So it's just, again, another string to the bow that is Brighton at the minute. When they had Everton pinned back, which they did a lot more in the second half with the superiority they had and Everton sending off, Ashley Young getting sent off, you really start to see more confidence in this Brighton team and really start to see their football take shape with the movements and the fluidity. As you can see here, there's diamonds all over the pitch, and this is the real quality of having this type of system, is there's triangles, diamonds, there's, there's passing lanes always going to be open to circulate around and play through to create openings. And there was a lot more rotations, I felt like, in these areas. So again, you'd see Veltman moving up in, in the right-hand side with Milner in these positions, making these little movements that could get Minter or the wide player on the ball. And it wouldn't just be Milner or Veltman making these runs for Minter to move inside. Let's say if it dragged Keane and Mikolenko in this area, then Welbeck or maybe Pedro coming over could show for the ball in these areas, receive it centrally with a bit more space on the edge of the box to get shots away and create opportunities. He also did see him turn into a bit of a into a bit of a three one at points when the fullback on that side would attack. Then you'd have Van Hecker, Dunk and the other fullback coming across with Viper protecting. I thought Viper struggled at points in that first half, coming to grips with the game. Felt like he was taking an extra touch or two that you maybe have time to do in the Netherlands. It's it, it's going to be a learning curve, absolutely. And I thought as the game went on, he got better at providing that base to circulate the possession around him and be that little safety pin that could link defence to attack and, and, as I say, just provide that real good technical base to the players. As much as it took him time to get going in this game, once they did and once they hit their full flow, uh, they opened Everton up time and time again. A good mix of short build-up, but also a good mix of direct attacking play is going to make them a real threat going forward. But how did they set off, off the ball? Brighton defended in a 4-4-2 shape, and this is where it was a lot more different whereas on the ball there wasn't an amazing amount of change from what they had with Deserby. The real change came off the ball whereas Deserby was high press he was he was man-to-man -man press high man marking and try and win the ball back in individual battles. Herzl was a lot more passive in his approach where they sat in a mid block 4-4-2 that was very vertically compact they didn't press the deeper players on the ball at all and again Time will tell whether this was just an oppositional instruction or this is how they generally want to play. But Welbeck and Pedro would sit off. They wouldn't intently press the centre-backs or Jordan Pickford, who would get involved in build-up. They would sit a little bit deeper. They'd be compact between the midfield and the defence, defending really wide 
very wide actually just stretching the pitch as much as possible which again i think is a bit of a risk but we'll see in the coming months how that's going to affect them and once they get more mobility in the team and, and a lot more youth and a lot more ability to cover ground that could be a key and they did win the ball a number of times with turnovers but there was also a lot of times where there were situations where they were going three on two in the midfield uh, to a negative with Gay Irugbenum. I hope I'm getting his name correctly, but he had a fantastic game. And Decore. But with Everton never playing through the middle of the pitch, this never got exploited. But there was a number of times where Milner and Viper got caught in between three players because of the width that they defend with. There was clear passing lanes at point. Another team that will build up and get numbers in between the lines will hurt Brighton against Manchester United next weekend when they like to build on their 3-1-6. That's going to be hard for them to deal with. It relied on great awareness from the central players to nip in and win the ball in these areas. So if the pass wasn't quite right, they had a lot of coverage. For the second goal especially, ball gets played out to the midfielder. I can't remember who it was. I think it was to Eric Bunham. And the Brighton midfielder snuck in, won the ball, and created a counter-attacking opportunity from there. And with the width that they defend with, once they win the ball in these situations, you get the runs of Matoma and Minter ready to attack the space in between centre-backs and full-backs, especially if a team in their build-up is a lot wider. That's a massive of reasons to why they could do it it makes them easier to counter attack and hit that direct threat of the pacey wide players once they win the ball back another issue that they faced when defending wide is because the back four defended wide especially with everton's uh, wingers that like to get on the ball and cross there was a lot of space horizontally in between their defenders and because of everton's direct nature they were constantly hitting channel balls to the likes of calvert lewin decore who would run off the side of their center backs into these areas into the channels to get on the ball creating space in between Dunk and Hinshelwood and Van Hecker and Veltman to create from these areas, lay it off to the wide player, specifically Harrison. They attacked more down the right hand side, who could get his crosses away. And Brighton were caught out a number of times in the first half through this direct tactic, getting hit in the channels constantly because of the wide nature of the back four. And Duncan Van Hecker aren't the quickest of players, so this can catch them out. And if you're playing against a team with more pace, that will be more of a detriment, which Everton don't really have. They're a physical team more than they are a quick team, but got done in these areas a lot more with signing fullbacks as well. This will improve the defensive quality of the wide players, but Hinchelwood did struggle a bit on that right hand side with Harrison putting in a number of balls, a number of poor balls, actually, better delivery, and who knows what we're saying for this game. But that wide nature of the defense creates that space for a direct threat to attack and if a team has a physical striker they're going to use that option to win those opportunities win those aerial duels and create second ball opportunities for whoever whether it's a wide player attacking or for a player making a movement on the inside so there was a few problems i think it's fair to say as much as three nil suggests a battering and it was and they were by far the better team there, there, there was a few little teething problems and I think a few, not issues, but I guess just a few things. We'll wait to see how it truly pans out, how they'll affair against a lot more technical oppositions that like to build up, that like to uh, battle them possession for possession. Everton were a direct threat. So as a result, they were catching Brighton out. Manchester United will be a different challenge. And I think against this shape, United could look to find space and create from there. So whether this is their philosophy or whether they'll adapt to the opposition they're against remains to be seen. But a lot of things to go, a lot of interesting concepts that Herzler is using off the ball. You never see teams defend that wide, which is the real interesting thing to me. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops. And the way he covers the the width of the pitch and the and the verticality with the compactness, you see it similarly with Unai Emery, but then they're never usually as wide as this on the ball. I still thought there was shades of deserve. You still thought it was very deserve esque, but that's not a bad thing. I've been massively an advocate of how good deserve is with his with his build up plays and and his on the ball possession, uh, general attacking play. So I'm not at all against that. There'll be little changes, I'm sure, and little shifts in how certain players react to playing in certain roles. Uh, Jao Pedro, I thought, had a fantastic game getting on the ball and helping create and, and turning that slower build up into that direct attack and threat quickly by getting on the ball, using his physicality and his ability on the turn to create from there. So uh, full credit to him. I didn't want to end this video without giving him a shout out. But let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Cheers, lads, in a bit.